Hi, yes, so um, Walmart, I used to work with Macy's, I, so I share some of your pain around that <laughs> thought where we used to say, well, don't stress about it too much each day because we're just selling people stuff they don't need. Um, and I really take that to heart. And as I hear you guys talk today, and I think about how we measure economic activity, and we think, what are the new KPIs that, that we're going to measure then? How do we measure that? Because KPI being? The, the key performance indicators um, that, that we use. So if we talk about things like GDP as one type of K KPI that we use to measure economic output and growth, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts around, you know, what, what do you see and how can we potentially measure some of these outputs? The, the thought that came to my mind when you were talking about, for example, the blender. Well, if I don't have to go buy a blender, mm -hmm. well, yeah, people might say you just impacted the economy in a negative way. But now, since I don't have to go buy that blender, now I can use that money towards other things. But besides money, how are we measuring the non-monetary inputs and outputs of the economy? So, so, so what are the, some of the yardsticks for the sharing economy, Lisa Gansky? Well, um, first of all, I think the, tr the notion of transactions versus products. So people are looking at you know, you, as an entrepreneur, you, you spend money on three things. You, you build a team, you build a product or infrastructure, and you acquire customers. Um, if you look at what's happening with music and publishing right now, the, those industries um, relative, the old guys, old models relative to, say, Amazon, Amazon has really learned that you love Amy Tan and you love Stephen King and they market specifically to you as opposed to pay for marketing to everyone. So their cost of acquisition of a customer once they have you, especially as a prime customer, mm -hmm. is really zero for every subsequent transaction. Um, that's a really compelling model in this new world and I think that increasingly we're going to see all sorts of companies going after that. Um, you see that every major auto manufacturer in the last three years has actually redefined themselves declaratively by saying we're not in the auto business, we're in the mobility business, um, which lends, you know, it's poetic, but also it opens up uh, for all sorts of things. So metrics include transactions. I think waste is going to be um, value because uh, if we're remanufacturing and recovering what we used to call waste as real value into the supply chain, that's going to have real value coming back. Um, and so there's a, a lot of things that were sort of out of the peripheral vision of the old industrial economy that becomes very mm -hmm. intri intricate and possible to measure because of sensors and people being connected to these networks. Um, transactions waste are two that I think are, you know, up right now for grabs. And Andy and, Rubin? Yeah, one, one thing I'll add is in the way the world changes with mobile and information, you know, in the old world for retail, the average person at a, at a store parks 23 spots away from the front door. So once you've parked your car, you've essentially paid a cover charge, and then you are just going to pick up additional items, where loyalty was all about the banner to get you to park your car at their store as opposed to the one, you know, next to them. Today, in a world where, with a mobile phone, you can be in a store and buy a product from a competitor store, and basically the endless options of number of products and offerings and price and delivery options. Loyalty has always been around in retail but takes on a very different meaning. And so while the metric isn't new, you know, it's not like loyalty is a new metric, the role that loyalty plays and the cost that lack of loyalty can have to a business is why we're seeing models like Amazon Prime and the Target Red Card that are as much about maintaining the customer as they are about selling items. And so I would say to continue to watch for existing metrics to take on new meaning with, you know, as technology becomes more prevalent in our lives. There's one more that, I, that you actually reminded me of, which I would say the value of data. Um, and increasingly, the, there's, a, there's a real value not only for, uh, you know, instances of data, but shared data has more value. And so we're going to see a real shift. I, I actually think that we're going to see a shift towards shared things, des things designed for sharing, services designed for sharing, and data that's been shared will have more value than, than those that are sort of inside of a wall. And you talk about, uh, say, a uh, high-end vacuum cleaner where that will that then be designed as kind of like cell phones now where it's something that you, you kind of buy a subscription, you, you buy an upgrade path, you buy a lifelong of happy cleaning. I don't know, you know. Yeah, uh, so, I don't know about those two words going yep, together. But right, yeah. okay. <laughs> but, but the idea that it's something that the, the company that makes it agrees to take it back from you at some point and give you something that's newer, better, and, and you're willing to share some data in that exchange. So it's very 
much you know what we've kind of all been talking about, which is I think that's right that that um, these companies are going to be incented whether and we've seen it slightly happening in addition with cell phones certainly to with cars where you know uh, a, your car company gives you a th hundred thousand miles or six year least, warranty yeah. you know those sorts of things. Um, I think that products are are going to have um, be the responsibility of the manufacturer that they're going to think more wisely about um, maintenance and building things as platforms so that they're upgradable and the cost of waste and how, how, you know, how they're going to set up communities to service things um, uh, similar to sort of dealerships if you want to use that not metaphor. make them so they break down in a year so you have to buy a new one precisely and, and so for that reason they're really looking at you know if they have the responsibility of because if the onus is on if the most expensive thing they do is to acquire us as a customer, then they don't want to do that every year or every time there's an interaction. Instead, if we are, are their customer and there's this relationship and they continue to perform, I mean, we, they still have to delight us, um, but because no one wants to really be held hostage in, a, in the equivalent of a crappy cell phone contract. Uh, contract. Yeah.